the glenoid, we go to the humeral side. So greater tuberosity fractures, we have different issues such as loss of range of motion, pain, and impingement, and sometimes it can have non-union and late migrations. And what are the factors which affect the management? Is the size, whether it's a small fragment which is tend to be avulsion, or a larger split fragment? On what is the displacement? Is it an undisplaced fracture, or is a displaced fracture in what direction, superior, posterior, inferior? Uh, stable or unstable, very difficult to judge, and combination of the fragments. So typically, greater tuberosity fracture are two types. The pull type, that is the avulsion fracture. This fracture tend to be small fragment. And a push type fracture, which generally occurs in dislocation. Now this article I, uh, I uh, identified three facets of the greater tuberosity, the superior, middle, and inferior facet, and the muscles that are attached to that, the rotor of muscles uh, going from the supraspinatus to the teres minor, they have different kind of pull. And depending upon what kind of fracture is there, we have different kind of displacement. Suppose we have only superior facet displacement that is going to displace into the subacromial area, and if your whole GT is going to go more posterior like this. So uh, the fracture on the left is almost like a rotac of avulsion, whereas fracture on the right is a big fragment, and the rotac of muscles are pulling it posteriorly. And when the fracture is associated with dislocation, we need to understand what is the mechanism of this injury. Is it a hill sack injury? So there are many articles which correlate it to the hill sack injury, where the glenoid is acting as a wedge and you know, kind of cr uh, creating the initial fracture line and the rotac of then completes it. What are the associated injuries? And uh, uh, there are, uh, again, management issue. When will you do uh, uh, the reduction of this? And what to address the, uh, how to address the bone loss in the crater of these fractures? So as far as mechanism of injury is concerned, uh, with uh, the dislocation and without dislocation, there is hardly any difference. Uh, all this uh, displacement and everything almost uh, fall uh, in line uh, as far as uh, uh, whether the GT fracture associated with dislocation or not. Uh, this is an article that is quoted by many. So the um, authors say that avulsion is not the, the leading cause of injury, and most of the time it's the shearing of the glenoid rim. And they also identified one particular fracture pattern with the inferior displacement, which is occurring because of impingement against the acromion. Uh, uh, another new classification, it is again uh, the more popular classification, is either avulsion type, or a split type, or a compression type. So the avulsion, as we have discussed, avulsion is mainly because of the um, muscle pull. Uh, the inferior displacement split fracture because of acromial impingement and the impression fracture is because of the fracture dislocation. Now what are the management guidelines? Will you, will you do CT and MRI on these cases? And how will you treat whether it's conservative, operative? Uh, there, there are not no clear-cut guidelines, but definitely X-rays like this can tend to miss the fractures. And if we see a slightest different rotation of the X-ray, we could have easily missed that GT fracture in the uh, first uh, on, the, on the previous X-ray. Uh, uh, it is um, uh, pretty relevant. So always, uh, uh, when in doubt, you can do a CT scan. Now, uh, patient presented with dislocation, whether we'd like to do a closed uh, reduction or not. So in general, uh, uh, articles show that uh, the reduction attempts are safe, but the success rate are inversely proportional to the fracture severity. Another article says that if the fracture dislocation is associated with greater tuberosity, we can still attempt with a 94% success rate, but if it is with the surgical neck, we should not attempt. Another article which show that if the fragment uh, to the AC to AB ratio is more than more point 0 0.4, you can have a risk of uh, uh, iatrogenic fractures. As far as treatment guidelines are considered, this is the classic article, Bono's article, who uh, studied that a 5 millimeter displacement can cause uh, uh, increase in the abduction force tremendously, and they, that's why they have recommended that um, uh, they sh we should fix these fractures. And Park has uh, added to that uh, that even in uh, even if the displacement is three millimeter, an individual with overhead activity, we should uh, tend to treat this fracture. So uh, fracture like this. So this was a fracture, very small fracture, almost like a rotator cuff avulsion, uh, can be treated uh, with a, a, a similar approach as we take for rotator cuff. I'm sorry, it's not playing here. So anyway, okay, okay. So. Uh, just point to make here that the anchor direction is not a typical for rotator cuff. Here we have to pass the anchor much more horizontally to get uh, the good purchase in the bone. Another fracture like this, uh, uh, bi bilateral GT fracture. On one side we have fixed with anchor, and on one side we have fixed with screw. And when will you try to fix it with screw? Is that whenever we have a fracture like this where the screw can be inserted one centimeter below the top part of the fracture, then we can pass it with the screw. Otherwise, we tend to use the anchors. 
So this uh, classification, the author has said that a smaller fracture, uh, the good approach would be to get it with a double row fixation. Uh, a split fracture can be fixed with screw or plate. An impression fracture, they are not many uh, made any recommendations, but definitely anchors are uh, better. What about conservative treatment? Now there are many articles, uh, at least three or four, who show that conservative results are also good and we should not underestimate the result of conservative treatment. However, the clear-cut guidelines which fracture will make, uh, be, will be better with conservative has not been made. But generally they say if the fracture is not severely displaced, we can try to treat it conservatively. So this um, um, systematic review, uh, which has studied various factors uh, about uh, the, dis uh, uh, the GT fracture with respect to displacement, treatment pattern with the arthroscopic, open, and they have made recommendation that more than less than five cent uh, millimeter, the uh, treatment can be conservative. More than five centimeter, it is surgery. And uh, it can be screw suture anchors or transitious sutures, but uh, no one method has been proven uh, superior to others. Uh, what about timing? A delay of more than two weeks can cause harm. Uh, this was one of the fracture, inosseous looking fracture, uh, was delayed and the, uh, the GT migrated uh, way proximally. Is there any difference in management of the patient with, with or without dislocation? So uh, this article uh, says that uh, the GT fracture is a fracture of necessity and uh, the patient with dislocation tend to have poor results, so there should be low threshold in fixing these fractures. So take home message is that there is no clear cut guidelines for management in general. More than three to five uh, millimeter displacement should be fixed. There should be low threshold if it is with dislocation. No one method is poorer than others. My preference is ORI for small fragment and screw if it is uh, one centimeter uh, displaced. So what Isaac Newton said that what we know is a drop and what we don't know is the ocean is very true for this fracture because in spite of being common, uh, there are no still clear guidelines for the management of this fracture. Thank you.